And I think we did not finish, uh, I think it was 36. I'd like to go back to 36, finish it up, uh, maybe even look at 42. And then um, uh, one problem with a condition, uh, boundary condition, and then a world problem. Is there any way we can start the problem over? From the beginning, yeah. of course, of course. Okay. Oh, absolutely. 36. That's what I said. I, I would like to start it from scratch. So dy over dx equals 5x to the fourth times y. There are many, many. 36 and 509. 509. So there are many, many different uh, types of differential equations. We are only looking here at the ones that are in which we can separate the variable. So that's basically a non sophisticated type of problem. Okay? So we're trying to separate the variable. Remember, dy over dx is the same with f prime. If I'm given f prime, I have to write it as dy over dx. I will multiply both sides by dx. And on this side, it appears that I have two variables. So obviously, I will have to divide both sides by y. So at this point, I can say that I separated the variables. As you see, y and dy on one side and x and dx on the other. No combo of x and y on any side. That's what we were trying to do, separate the variables. This is not always possible in solving differential equations, but in this class, we are only solving this kind. Good, so then we are going to integrate both sides. The left-hand side is, we know what? Which function prime is 1 over y? Very good, of the absolute value of y, awesome. The right-hand side is 5, and what function prime is x to the fourth? x to the fifth over 5 plus a constant c. Do we agree with this? Yes. Of course, I'll simplify. 1 and 1. So I have natural log, the absolute value of y, equals x to the fifth plus c. Now we have to stop for a second and go to something that I need to refresh your memory on. If I have, this is natural log with base e, correct? That's why we write it as ln. But if I have log base in any base, a, of x, log in any base of something, equals y, let's say this is y, then this can be converted into an exponential equation. Mm -hmm. Starting with the base, the base raised, not multiplied, the base raised to y equals a, x, raised base to y equals x. I am going to apply this very important property to what we have here. So what is the base? E raised to this whole thing is the absolute value of y. So this is the exact same procedure. This time the base was E. The base raised to this whole thing equals this, which is the absolute value of y. Do we understand the procedure? OK. Now, we are solving for y. So if you remember, the absolute value of y equals a number. I'm going to write 10. There are two possibilities, that y is 10. The absolute value of 10 is 10. Or the other option is that y is excellent, negative 10. So forget about this. This was just a simple example. So I can show you how we proceed from here. So then y equals plus or minus. Yeah, but this was a, just an example in which I replaced this by 10 to just to illustrate. So this is just an example. So the other side will be e to x to the fifth plus c. OK, now one more step. Here's another example of the method that we need to apply now. A raised to n plus m. What is this? 
it's a raised to n times a raised to m. I have to use this here. In other words, then the exponent is a sum of two quantities. I will change it into, so y equals plus or minus, e raised to x to the fifth multiplied by, exactly, excellent. Final step. All this will be considered a constant. So then y equals the constant e to x to the fifth. So here we used two different steps that we need to refresh our memory on. One was how to change a log equation into an exponential equation. The base raised to this whole thing equals the absolute value of y. And we wrote that. Then we had to refresh our memory on how to deal with the absolute value, an equation with the absolute value, or absolute value equation, plus or minus. So that's where the plus or minus are coming from, from this side, not from this side. And then we had to refresh our memory on an exponential property, a raised to a sum equals a raised to the first quantity times a raised to the second quantity. And this is the most general solution of the um, differential equation. Uh, let's look at 42. In 42, we have dy over dx equals 7 over y squared. What do you think we should do? Yes, how? Um, the 7 times multiplied times. So we can cross multiply. So y squared dy equals 7 dx. Are the variables separated? Yeah. Yes. So now I'm ready to integrate. Can anyone tell us what we get on the left-hand side? y to the third over? Three. Perfect. Three. y to the third over 3. What do we get on the, on the right-hand side? Three. Plus c. Plus. Perfect. Because we're integrating, in other words, which function prime is this? No, the answer is 7x plus c. OK, I'm solving for y. I will have to do what first? Multiply everything by? Yes. So this is 21x plus 3c. Again, this doesn't mean anything. I'm going to change it into c. 3 times a constant is a constant. So then y cubed equals 21x plus c. But I need to find y alone, by itself, not y cubed. What should I do now to both sides to get y? Very good. And we're done. It's the cube root of 21x plus c. And we found the function, the most general. But now I would like to look at one with, um, with a given condition. And then a war problem. Any questions? OK, uh, let's look at uh, 44. On the same page, 510. I gave you the wrong information. This was on page 510, not 509. I'm sorry. My apologies. Everything is on 510. Um, 44. 44. So we are given y prime equals 2x minus xy. And we are told <clears throat> y is 9 when x is 0. Why do you think this information is given to us? To identify? That's it. Like before with the antiderivatives. OK, perfect. I need to separate the variables. If I don't, I won't be able to continue. 
Any suggestions? First of all, what is y prime? I can't use y prime. I would have to use DY. Excellent. So now look at the right hand side. Is there a way of taking x out of there? Exactly. So we have x, 2 minus y. Excellent. What will be the next step towards separating the variables? <clears throat> you can do it in two steps. You can multiply both sides by dx first. Let's do that because it's clear. And then we have to the both sides by I don't want x on this side. 2 minus y. So dy over 2 minus y equals x dx. Good. So what I would like to do is factor our negative 1 and put it on this side dy negative in front y minus 2 equals x dx or dy over y minus 2 equals negative x dx and now I integrate the left hand side is which function prime is 1 over y minus 2 Excellent. Very good. Minus. And the right hand side? Plus a constant c. Great job. But now I am told, before I continue, y is 9 when x is 0. I'm not done because I have to solve this for y. But I am told that when y is 9, x is 0. So what does that mean? When y is 9, how much is 9 minus 2? So this is natural log 7. x is 0. So what do I have on the right hand side? That's it. So then the equation becomes natural log of y minus 2 equals negative x squared over 2 plus natural log 7. And now I'm ready to apply that procedure. Base raised to blah, blah, blah equals the absolute value of x minus 2, um, y minus 2. So e raised to all this equals the absolute value of y minus 2. Okay, what next? So what we do next, of course, is the same thing we just did. So I have y minus 2 equals plus or minus e to negative x squared over 2 times e to natural log 7. or y equals 2 plus or minus. Can anyone tell us what this is? Yeah, this will be 7. E raised to, here's another property, log, um, I'm sorry, a raised to log base a of x is x. a raised to log base a of x is x. As long as this and this are the same base. The same thing with e raised to natural log x is x, because this and this base are the same. So this will be 7. So 7e seven e to negative x squared over 2. Now, I have to, in this particular case, Remember, this function has to fulfill the given condition. So when x is 0, y is 9. So 
when x is 0, how much is this? How much is e to 0? Now careful. The answer must be 9. Which of these two does not work? The minus. The minus. So you would have eliminated? I have to. Because it doesn't fulfill the given condition. So there are not two functions, but exactly one. I have to keep in mind that the given condition, when x is 0, y is 9. So I will say only y equals 2 plus 7 e to negative x squared over 2 because of this condition. Okay, let's look at a war problem. Uh, let's say like 56. See when we apply something like this. Any questions? Yes. So 56 on 5.11, thank you. Uh, total profit from marginal profit. Hannah's head company's marginal profit, P, is a function, as a function of its total cost, C. So P profit, C cost. Fine. We are given DP over DC equals negative 200 divided by C plus 3 raised to 3 halves. Here's the question. Find the profit function P of C. Of course, we're asked to find Y, or P in this case. If P is 10, oops, if P is $10 when cost is 61. Why is this information given? Yes, in order to find a constant. Perfect. Excellent. Good. So this is obviously a differential equation. I obviously have to separate the variables. And how do I do it? You can do it in, in steps. First, I will multiply both sides by dc. So dp equals negative 200. c plus 3 to negative 3 halves times dc. The reason I changed it is because it's easier to integrate. So now what do you think we have to do? We have to integrate. What function prime is 1? Exactly. In this case, p, of course. Of course. If it's dp, I have to write p. If it's dx, I have to write x. Very good. Negative 200 times. Be very careful. c plus 3, I should use a substitution. But because the derivative of c plus 3 is still 1, like would be with c, it's OK if I don't change the variable. But if I have c squared, I cannot do it. Right? But c plus 3 and the derivative is the same. So if I say I denote c plus 3 by y, and then I have the same thing with dy. These dc and dy will be the same. So then, negative 200 times. So now, allow me instead of c, because c is cost, I'm going to write plus d. Just this time, let's change the constant from the letter C to the letter D. Why? Because I don't want us to confuse it with the cost. So let's call it D. Okay. We can use lowercase d or uppercase d. It's up, up to you. Is this okay? Okay. So then I have to increase the power by 1 and divide by that number for the integration, right? So if I have x to the third integral from x to the third dx, I write x to the fourth over 4 yep. plus a constant c. I'm going to do the same thing here. c plus 3 raised to negative 3 halves plus 1, which is negative 1 half, divided by negative 1 half. Is this OK? I'm divided by a fraction, so I have to flip it. So I get 400 and the signs go away. 
So this is indeed P of C as 400. Now we can bring it back down, square root of C plus 3 plus a constant D. It's good, but it's not good enough. I have the information that allows us to determine D. P is 10 when C is 61. Square root of 10 to find D. So 10 equals 400 divided by 61 plus 3, which is 64, plus D. How much is the square root of 64? Good. So 10 equals 400 divided by 8 plus D. How much is 400 divided by 8? 50. So 10 equals 50 plus D. So how much is D? When I move it to the other side, it becomes negative. So negative 40. So we have finally the function, the unique function, 400 divided by the square root of c plus 3 minus 40. Part B, at what cost will the firm break even? And what do I have to do? When a company breaks even, what happens to the profit when the company breaks even the profit is zero break even point profit is zero so let's set this equal to zero so that's part B so 400 over the square root of C plus 3 minus 40 equals zero any suggestions on how to continue Awesome, of course. I have to. Yes. And then, of course, I'll cross multiply and get 400 equals 40 times the square root of C plus 3. I want to clean it up. What should I do to both sides to clean it up? Buy. Exactly. So I have 10 equals the square root of c plus 3. What type of equation is it and how do I solve it? Exactly. 100 equals c plus 3, so c must be 97. At what cost will the firm break even? It will break even when the cost is 97. Any questions? Ready? What I would like to do now is the last four sections of this chapter, chapter six, of this uh, course, I'm sorry. So chapter six deals with functions of several variables. Which means not one variable, but maybe two or maybe three variables. Before we do anything, I'd like to jump to section, the last section, which is 6.4. I don't really agree with this section being in this uh, chapter. Um, and I'm not going to ask you to do anything but simply with a graphing calculator. So, but I need to explain what it is. The least squares method. Okay, 
So here is, we are collecting some data. And we plot the data. And let's suppose we have these points. I, let's say I measure each and every one of you, um, your height and your blood pressure. So this is your height and this is your blood pressure. This is your height and this is your blood pressure. Another person, height and blood pressure. Another person, height and blood pressure. And I have two, four, six, seven points. I would like to, and I hope you agree, the cloud kind of stretches along the line. Mm -hmm. It does not stretch along the quadratic function, right? Um, it's not all over the place, so I cannot fit any model in it. But it kind of stretches along a, a straight line. The question is, how do I find this, the line of best fit? Because I graph this line, somebody else may graph this line for whatever reason. Somebody else may graph this line for whatever reason. I don't want any of these three. I want the one that is the best fit. So which is the one with the best fit? It's the one with the differences, this difference, this difference, this difference, this error, if you want, this error, this error, and this error, the smallest. So if this is the line of best, best fit, all these errors from the actual point to the line for all the seven points will be the smallest. Which technique will give us the minimum of a function? We would have to find an expression for those errors. We would have to add them up, and then we will find a derivative. We'll set it equal to zero, and we'll find the minimum error. And based on what we get, we will get the best, the line of best fit. There's a long discussion behind it. All I would like us to do is this. On page 554, let's start with problem 12, 554. Life expectancy of men, assuming they are correct. So number of years X since X since 1990. And life expectancy in years. And I'm copying the data. Zero corresponds to 71.8. 10 to 74.1. 13 to 74.8, 17 to 75.4, 21 to 76.3. With the graphing calculator, Okay, so let's go to stats, stat, edit is already highlighted, press enter, list L1 consists of 0, enter, 10, enter, 13, 17, and 21. Move to list 2. 
76.3. First, I would like to see these points. Notice one very important thing. X starts from 0 to 21, so I have to make sure that the viewing window has 0 to 21 on the x-axis. And I have to make sure that this is this includes 76, right? So I'm really interested in 71 through 77. So on the y-axis, I will go to 80 because I need to see those five points. Ready? So let's go to y to window. I want x minimum to be zero. If you want, we can go to negative two just just to see the y-axis. Y maxim, X maximum, uh, it goes to 21, so I'm going to say 30. With a scale of 2 is good enough. Y minimum, I wanted 0, or I can just have negative 4 to see the, y, the X axis. And it goes to 80 with a scale of 10, let's say. And then I want to go to stat plot second and stat plot. Click on the first one. I want it on. Click on on. And now let's see which one I select. I don't want a graph like this. I don't know. I don't want a histogram. I don't have, want a, um, a whisker plot. I don't want this. I don't want this. I really want that. And I make sure that I have the x-axis in this cell 1 and then this cell 2. And you can choose any type of um, symbol that you want. This is good enough if you want the cross, if you want a bigger dot or a smaller dot, it doesn't matter. So let's say I want a bigger dot. And then I click on graph. So now if I go higher, maybe I can see those points better. So let's go higher with window Let's go to 120 and press graph. OK, so it's a little bit better because it's in the middle of the, uh, of the um, screen. Now, I want to determine that line of best fit. So let's go back to second, no, just variables. No, I'm sorry, second and variable, second, uh, second and stat, I'm sorry. Uh, it's just that, I'm sorry. Go to calcul calculations. Okay. So this is what we're talking about, the linear regression. There are other possibilities for linear regression or other regression. So if you go scroll down for a second, just to look, we are not doing any of this. So we have quadratic regression, we have cubic regression, we have quarter power four. We have the linear regression with reverse. We have natural log regression. Oh, uh, and on and on and on. Okay, we have exponential re regression and power regression. Okay, and even logistic growth model. I don't need any of this. I only need the first linear regression, this one, number four, with ax plus b. Not this one. I want the ax plus b. I went too far. This one, number four. Press four. Yes, the x is in the L1. The y is in L2. And all I want to do is calculate. Give me that line. Give me that line. Do the calculus part and just determine the line for me. And here's the line. 0 0.21, 71.88. I'm, I'm going to copy it. Y equals 0.21x plus 71.88. And what I would like to do now is go back to Y equals. And I want to put the function in. Let's see if it will allow me to put both. I really hope it allows me to um, put the function in. Maybe, maybe not. X plus 71.88 and hit graph. Okay. It does work. Good, excellent. So this is guaranteed 
to be the line of best fit, the closest to the closest possible to all points. The error is the minimum possible. This is the line of best fit, the regression line. Okay, now we do this in, in statistics with our students as well. Here's the question. Why is this so important? Because if the trend continues, I want to go, I'll be able to go outside of what I just created. Maybe when x is 100, maybe when x is 120, when, maybe when x is whatever, and be able to predict. Is there a guarantee that the prediction will, will be accurate? No. But at least I have something. So in part B, it said, part A, find the regression line. We did. In part B, it says, use the regression line to predict the life expectancy of men in 2020 and in 2025. Of course, assuming that the trend continues. I have the regression line. X equals zero means 1990. I have to determine what, what X is for 220. 2020 and what is x for 2025 and put it in the regression line. Again, what does this have to do with calculus? The line, these coefficients are determined with, cal with calculus. It's a big theory behind it, big calculation. But we have the calculator, so I'd like to do it with the calculator. But we can determine these with calculus minimizing the error. So then, so how much is x? What is x for 20? 30. Good. What is x for 2025? 20, Perfect. So we have to determine y equals 0 0.21 times 30 plus 71.88. And then the other one, 0.21 times 35 plus 71.88. And if you want to give me those numbers, I'll put them in. First y is and second y is. First y has 78.18. 78.18. Oh, 18. Okay. And the other one? Just replace x by 35. Just the zero by. 79.14. Good. So is this going to be true? I don't know. Is the trend is the, is the trend going to continue the way it is as we have it? No, I don't know. But at least we can have an estimate or an idea of where it's going. And that's linear regression. Now, if the model fits something else, like a quadratic regression or cubic regression, then it's the same calculation with a different function that we use in stats. OK, do you think we need another example? Um, yes, please. Question. Yes. So, <clears throat> This is more accurate than just finding the difference between the, the first point and the last point because it accounts for all of them, right? But we would always have to do that in the calculator? Yes. Yeah. I will not ask you to do anything by hand. Yeah. Okay. No, I would not. Because it's a function that you have to determine. And you have uh, the errors. You have to square them. And then you have to find the derivative. So it's equal to zero and so on and so forth. And there is no need for that. It doesn't, I looked in, uh, in your book and it doesn't say it. It just shows technology connection. It just gives a technology. However, it does some calculations, but not, not to that extent that I was telling you about. Do we need another example with linear regression? OK, do we know how to determine um, how to put the uh, lists in and how to determine how to graph all three, I mean the points and the list. And he figure it out again. Can you try another one? Yes, of course. Let's do another one. Um, what about predicting the world's record in the high jump? 14, that's one option. Um, stock prices. Number 16, maybe that's interesting. Uh, football ticket prices, number 10. Okay, very good. So number 16, perfect. 
Number 16 on page 555. The data in the, in the following table give um, the price of one share of Starbucks stock on January 1st on uh, various years. A number of years since 2010. So I have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 2059, 3021. 4661. You can already plug put them in. 55.39. And the last one, 76.17. It says find the exponential regression curve for this one. So y will be a e to kx. So the regression, the exponential regression curve, will give us a um, coefficient and x of the power. So in the list, I'm editing the list. You go back up to list L1 and just clear and enter. Go back up to list L2, clear and enter. So the first one was 0, 1, two, three, four, uh, the next 20 point five nine, thirty point two one, uh, 46.61, 55 point three nine, and the last one 76.17. Perfect. Go to stat go to calculations and now we are looking for exponential regression I will only ask about the linear but since we picked that I we have to finish it now here it is exponential regression press enter list L1 yes list L2 yes just calculate so we have a which is 21.76 and the power of the base of um, the exponential function 1.38. So, which uh, exponential? So in front is 21.76 times e to 1.38x. Use the regression curve to um, estimate the price of one share of Starbucks stock on January 1st in 2016 and 2020. So what do we do? So um, number of years since 2010. So this will be for x equals 6 and this will be for x equals 10. So we plug in this function. In y equals clear and we have 21.76 times e to 1.38x. I hope it works. I, I forgot to put parentheses. I almost never forget to put parentheses. I'm going to put them in. Oops. I wanted to insert a parenthesis. And write 1.38x. Close the parentheses. Okay. And I want 6 and 10. Oh, yes, of course. I want 6 and 10. 
Okay, let's see what I did. 21 point, 1.8 Something is not right. Did we enter the data? Did I enter the data correctly? I'm getting the same answer you got. Yeah. Okay. Is must be an ex exponential? Yes, that's what it says. Find the exponential regression curve. Did you cast it? I know. I'm just looking to see if there is another. So on the last one, uh, the equation is passed through the points, but this one doesn't dictate. So no, I'm I'm wondering if they are. If, if, yeah, I see it here. It, it, it's, it doesn't necessarily have to pass through them. Right. It has to be the closest possible for the smallest error. Right. It and just and happened that it was closer that uh, next that time. Okay. But it doesn't have it will never pass through all of them. Okay. It may pass through some or be close to some. So the exponential regression. And we had Listel one and Listel two. Yeah, something is wrong with B. A is fine. But B is, um, it shows that it's, um, this B should be smaller than 1. I'm not sure why we get, uh, we get a number than 1. Why? Because um, B2, so 1 point, oh. So this is, I'm sorry, I wrote E. So Y equals A times B to KX. So Y equals 21.76. B is 1.38 raised to the X power. If we are using that formula from the calculator, we have to use what they are giving us, which is this. So the calculator is using is determining the exponential. One more time. So go to stat. So when we go to calc and go to linear I'm sorry. Um, okay, it's more sense. <laughs> right. Yes. So that's how the calculator is, cal is calculating it. Yes. So exponential. Okay. So one more time. You see it. Is B is the base. X is the variable. A is 21.76. And the base here is 1.38 raised to X. So now let's let's replace the function. So it's 21.76 multiplied by 1.38 caret x. And we go to second and table. And um, yeah.
Okay. Six for six years, 150, and for 10 years, 545. Okay. Sorry about that. The calculator is not using E. The book is using E, but the answers are the same. Okay. So from here, when x is when x is six, we get y equals one hundred and fifty dollars point twenty nine, and when x is ten, we get y equals five hundred forty five point oh seven. So the book was was lying. Okay, are we okay with linear regression or regression in general? 